Okay, all right. So this is LaQueen Arlene Battle. Battle First Aid Responder Services here in the city of Boston, okay? Very happy to be here today. I'm almost done with my list, okay? Um, I had a list. Really, really good topics today. So thank you, YouTube, as well as all my YouTube social media platform, the city of Boston, for letting me get my topics here today. I did about 15 topics. Very happy to be here today. Actually got my point across, and it's actually helping me to process for myself as well as you to you guys about what I am going through so this has been really great talk today on Sunday August 22nd about what I'm dealing with personally it can help you as well as what's going on in the media what's going on in politics Afghanistan COVID-19 Jesse Jackson a lot of this how it's affecting the black community didn't being a single person looking for work and President Biden okay a lot of that other issue so I'm very happy that YouTube is allowing me to have this platform okay so I'm almost done for today on my one of my last videos I'm very I feel more refreshed and uh, ready to uh, speak out about a lot of issues that need to be addressed as well as trying to get a word trying to get a word I just sometimes people are like I need a word I need a word I need a word well um, we really do need a word for today absolutely absolutely so this is LaQueen battle I'm not a prophetess um, but um, but I am, I'm just a regular person who's going through a lot of issues. And hopefully I can help you guys out on my YouTube platform as well as help myself at the same, same time. Okay? You can't help other people until you help yourself. Okay? Alright, so this is LaQueen Battle. Uh, what I'm, I'm trying to find a pen. One of my topics today I'm going to have to deal with is talking about family. Okay, family. Just look, I got a pen, pencil. <laughs> I can't find a pen. Look, another one. All right. So what I am? Oh my God, I can't find a pen. So what I am dealing with today is. There it is. Okay. So. Okay, so my topic right now that I want to talk about right now, uh, before I leave today, is called family. Okay, family. What is family? Okay, let's let's go over here. I want to go to the dictionary definition of family. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, Webster's definition of family. Okay, so the definition of family by Miriam Webster's Dictionary Online. Okay, in 1828, family is the basic unit in society traditionally consisting of two parents rearing their children or also any of various social units differing from but regarded as equivalent to the traditional family okay a group of individuals living under one roof and usually under one head a group of person of common ancestry is a clan a people or a group of peoples regarded as deriving from a common stock a group of people united by certain convictions or a common affiliation of fellowship. The staff of a high official, such as the president. Or a group of things. I'm at the Amtrak station. So, okay. Or a group of things related by common characteristics such as a closely related series of elements or chemical compounds, a group of related languages descended from a single ancestral language, the descendants or line of a particular individual, especially of some outstanding female, an individual strain within a breed, or a unit of a crime syndicate, such as the mafia, operated within a geographical area. So these are all 
definitions of what a family is by Miriam Webster's Dictionary Online, founded in 1828, okay? So what is family to me? Okay, so for me, family, you can have a physical family that you were born with, okay, a blood bond, okay? Or you can have a spiritual family that you have been predestined with, that you've been exposed with. You guys have had the same similar, relation, similar experiences. You've had that spiritual connection. That's the spiritual family. And you can also have a community cultural group, your friendship, your 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 sort your clan group your your friendship your compadres okay your associates family so you have your blood bond family you have your spiritual family and you have your close-knit group of friends which are also called a family for me throughout times what has really been the thing that has gotten me over through a lot of hurdles in my life through a lot of abuse abusive situations in my life as well as a lot of overcoming a lot of situations in my life abuse domestic violence verbal abuse sexual abuse as well as a lot of pain the pain cycle in my life has dealt with the spiritual family that I've been exposed to as well as been exposed around okay so I've had great people in my life I've had mentors I've had godmothers I've had teachers I've had friends I've also had cousins okay cousins that are professionals that are community oriented I've had women positive women okay whether they're married or not but women in the community family oriented women in my life that have made a positive impact on me that have led me in direct direction that have prayed for me that have given me encouragement that have given me discernment that have taught me how to do my hair that have taught me how to dress that have taught me how to laugh that have taught me how to cook, that have taught me how to date. I've had great, great women in my life like that. That is what a family means to me. I've had that spiritual family. That is what, to me, La Queen Battle, that is my main family, the spiritual family that I've had in my life. As well as I've had my blood bond family. Okay, now growing up in your older years, when you when you reach into your thirties, your forties, your fifties, you have that blood bond knit family members. But eventually, over time, when you get older and older, people start to die off, or they start to marry off, or they start to de de to develop into partnerships and domestic relationships with other people, and that family unit, that family network, begins to break up as people move on about their lives and move on to different cities, or move on into different careers, or move on to a different environment that they that they that they weren't exposed to in their childhood. And so literally, that blood bond relationship that you have with that person as a child breaks up when that, child, when that person that you used to know as a cousin, as a younger cousin, now that they're married, they are no longer your family because they now have a new friendship, a new relationship with a new individual in their lives. And so don't take it as an insult when that person doesn't call you their blood bond family anymore. Don't, it's not really insulting. That person has married off into a new, a new relationship, into a new livelihood, where now they have a new set of relationships, a new set of family members, children, partnerships, domestic partnerships, bank accounts, um, businesses. That person now is exposed to a new life, a lifestyle, and a new relationship. Okay. I'm, a, I'm almost done. I'm really getting to. I'm really getting into it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Right, anyway, so don't take it offensively. Okay. Don't take it offensively when you have somebody that you grew up with, and now you're as adults. They don't call you your family anymore. But you are still blood related, yes, that's great, but you're, but you're not family anymore. You are related, but that relationship is not the same. So don't take it offensively. And it doesn't have to necessarily mean anything to deal with money, okay? It doesn't necessarily have to deal with anything financial, it could just be that, 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 
that net network set of people, okay, that bought that 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 link is now separated. Separated by city, separated by culture, separated by language, and separated by class. So that person is not in a different class or is in a different culture than you. So they have a new family. So they may like, hi, how you doing? But at the same time though, they they are now a new person. Even though they are your blood kindred, okay? But don't take it take it offensively when you are no longer they no longer call you your cousin. You're like, "Oh, they call you a friend." But we grew up together. We were blood relatives. Yes, but we're friends now. So don't take it offensively. And I'm just taking talking all this off the top of my head, okay? So I've had experiences like that where I've dealt with, okay? I've dealt with a lot of my cousins growing up, okay? We're like, hey, we used to be close, tight knit people. We used, we, we, used, we, used to, we used to be related. We used to hang out, chill, yeah. We used to chill as younger people, as younger younger children. But now that we're older and adults in our thirties and forties and fifties. Okay, now we're just friends, and it's okay to be friends. But we're still we're still cousins, yeah, we're still blood. But now we're just friends. And so that that connection, that network, you're no longer able to have that same connection with that person, and you're trying to reach out to that person for help, but that person can no longer help you anymore. You no longer have that same connection with that person as an adult that you had as a child. So you try to reach out to that person for help as an adult, but they no longer can help you out. Because sometimes it's politics that get in the way, sometimes it's relationships that get in the way, and sometimes it's just personal opinions that get in the way. Yeah, you're my cousin. Yeah, yeah, you're my cousin. I understand. But I can't help you out anymore like I used to. And then you have that set of that set. I'm put my have my mask. You have that set of, of of classmates of peers around you that are your family members. It could be like I have my gang people with me. I have my clan people with me. My clan, you know, my homies, my girlfriends, my guy friends. And now we're a family because we we always hang out together. We always chill with each other. We do the same thing, or we're always involved in each other's lives. So then you have the friends, that French, that friendship, which becomes a family. And so it ends up turning that that group of friends have the same behaviors, the same attitudes, the same hairstyles or whatever. And now you are called family because you're, you're a close ne network of friends. And you're just friends and now these friends become your family literally family you can do a blood bond you can do whatever you want but now they're your family and then you look to your parents you look to your 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 family members when you were a child and you're like yeah these people are not related to you well i don't care if they're related to me or not they're still my family and usually as a child for me as a child i had a close network with people growing up with my god my godmothers with my teachers and I call my white teacher I'm African American I have Latino and Indian in me I call my white teacher my family I call my white teacher she was like my sister my godmother I called her my sister my friend and now as an adult I am still very much connected to her surviving relatives she died of cancer, but I'm still very much connected to her surviving husband and her surviving children and surviving network of family support system. But she still is my family. So I have my blood family as well as my peer support family. So who's closer to me? My blood family or my close clanship family? My, my clanship family. So if I have any kind of problems in my life, or if I'm dealing with kind of any mental illness issues, any anxiety issues, dealing with the street issues, do I go to my fat, my bloodbound family? They can't help me. 
I go to my to my support system, which then becomes my family. And sometimes it's insulting to your blood by family to make you look up to somebody who's of a different race, of a different culture than you. They take it offensively. They take offensively that you try to reach out for help to somebody else when you should be looking to us for help. Well, that's not how it is. That's not who I am. I'm my own person. I have my own identity and, who, and this is who I am. I don't want you and I don't want you to hook up. I don't want you to set up. I want my own individual uh, connections. I want my own individual personality. I'm my own person. I don't need your help, even though we're blood family or not. And sometimes when you reach out to blood family, they end up turning against you. Okay, it's a battle sometimes. At the same time, though, your blood family can be the best thing or they can be the worst thing when you're going through a, a tough situation. And I know I'm talking off my head, but that's kind of the situation, the experience that I'm going through right now. I'm dealing with a lot of issues from my blood bonded family that I, I can't connect with, with, with the reality that I'm experiencing here on the street in Boston. I'm trying to find a new network of people, a new family here in a completely different city on a completely different part of the world. And then you also have people who claim to be your family because you have the same race and the same culture. Well, you're not my family just because we're the same race. We're not related. Yeah, well, I'm your mama. No, you're not my mama. You're just a classmate. Oh, I make decisions for you. No, you don't make decisions for me. I make decisions for myself. You can actually get into legal situations with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm dealing with a lot of issues with my blood bonded family, like my blood kindred, as well as with my social network group of family members. So who do I go to for who do I trust more? Who's on my who's on my phone more? My blood kindred. But where do I get my help from? My social network, a group of friends, my white friends, my Mexican friends, my Latino friends. Okay, that's who I go to for help. I don't go to my blood kindred family because they can't help me. And they don't want to see me. They don't want to know me. They don't want to deal with me. And it gets, it gets up to be like that. Especially for me, in my case, when I'm moving from city to city or I've dealt with a lot of gang issues and violence and criminal behavior in your family. And you try to leave that environment, you try to leave that situation, but it doesn't change. No, we want you in the business, we want you a part of us. Well, I'm not trying to be a part of y'all. I'm not trying to be involved in this at all. Well, you are and you can't change it. Well, I do and I accept it, so I will move on. Well, uh, you just have to accept the fact. Well, I'm not interested. Oh, well, you just still have to accept it. Well, I don't have to accept it. And that's when that blood gets in the way. It's like the Godfather, okay? He had to literally, okay, take care of them. It's sad to say that sometimes blood family, blood kindred gets involved in the way like that. Especially when it comes to marriage decisions, financial decisions, childhood uh childhood decisions divorces child custody wills legal wills living wills life insurance bank accounts life insurance especially living wills especially who 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 is in charge of the living will is it the blood family or is it that person's social network of friends who's in the living will And most of the time when that person makes a living will like I did as a mistake when I was in Chicago, that person's living will authoritates prominence over the blood blonde, over that blood bond family. So the living will has legal authority over the blood bond. 
And sometimes you could take somebody to court over a living will, but it doesn't change the fact that that person put it in writing what their will said it was. So that blood bond family could fight, but you can't fight against a will. A will is made and it's written in stone. And it can hurt the children in the long run too. I'm 20 minutes into this. But for me, I'm dealing with a lot of issues, okay? I'm dealing with the same thing from city to city to city to city, the issue to issue to issue, where I'm being called out on the street, being called out in public of my behavior, as well with dealing with people dealing with the same issues, okay? Who is this? Is this my family? Is this my blood my family? Is this my social network of family? Who is this and how are they associated with me? And why people are calling me out on this issue? It gets embarrassing, it gets harassing, it gets insulting when you as a grown adult, a 30-something, a 40-something, a 50-something, have to deal with your isolated, your social isolated, you're alone, you're homeless, you're despair, you're in poverty, and you're poor. So who do you reach out to for help when you're poor, and you're alone, and you're homeless? Who do you reach out to for help? Do you reach out to your blood family or do you reach out to your social network group of friends, which are your family, your emotional family? Okay? You're poor, you're homeless, you're in despair, and you're isolated and alone. That blood bonded family, that blood, only wants to help you. If it's only something in it for them. Usually that's how family gets involved in it. Okay. And that's how family can be. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's old. It's young of the restless. It's days of our lives. I mean, it's an old soap opera. It's old. It's old. It's old. Oh, yeah, this person, whatever, whatever, whatever. But in reality, you could actually take people to court on that issue. Like, you are not related to me. We are not related. We are not related anymore. We may have been, we may have the same blood, Kendrin. But you can literally emancipate, your, emancipate yourself from an abusive situation as an adult. You could legally emancipate yourself from an abusive situation or from a family close network of friends as an adult. And release any kind of legal authority or legal bondage that family may have over you. But when you make a will, you put somebody in authority, somebody in charge of that. And sometimes you can make a notation to that will or make a change to that will as long as all parties are notified. But for me, I have no idea. <laughs> but for me, being exposed to this situation, I'm here in Boston, low income, on the streets, alone, despair. What do I do? Who do I reach out to for who do I reach out to for support and for help? Who's gonna help me? I've been kicked out of out of this city, I've been kicked out of this city, I've been kicked out of this city, I've been kicked out of this place of business, I've been kicked out of this job, I've been kicked out of this house, I've been kicked out of my family's house, I've been kicked out of here, I've been kicked out of there. Okay, so who who do you reach out to for help? Who do you reach out for help? It's hard. It is very I'm twenty four minutes into this conversation. It is very, very, very hard to reach out to somebody for help and they call themselves your family. As a single person on the streets, as a single black woman, it's very difficult to be continually kicked out of places, being kicked out of establishments, okay? Because of this reason, because of this, as well as being kicked out of your own relative's household.
okay? It is difficult. But you have to deal with like, okay, so what do I do? Especially when it comes to, uh, okay, here's another example. Being uh, uh, gay, the gay and lesbian community. When they're going through a lot of hate, they again they have their own set network of friends, as well as they become family through the set network of friends and associates and people who actually care for them and want to help them succeed, want to help them to make them healthy. We support you, we support what you're going through. We want to help you, we know what you're going through. Okay, deal with a lot of hate. Okay, it could be a hate issue too at the same time. Family violence and hate. So I'm trying to figure out like, who do I go to and what is my family, who do I go to? And usually most of the time you have to establish that within yourselves. Okay? All right, so this is Queen Battle here at Battle First Aid Responder Services. It's late. <laughs> It is 10.30 here on Sunday evening. I'm here in downtown Boston. I love you guys. Please continue to pray for me. Keep me in your thoughts and prayers. I am on Amazon Bars and Nobles. As well as please send me donations to Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. I need your support. I can't, I can't get where I'm going through without you. Okay? So what is your family? What is your family? You can, have, you can be blood bonded related to somebody or you cannot. But it's your choice of what you want to make. It's always your choice and your decision. <laughs> okay, so this is LaQueen Battle of Battle First Aid Responder Services. I love you guys. Please continue to keep me in your thoughts and prayers. I know there's a lot of attention being made. What's going on in Afghanistan, what the president is dealing with, as well as COVID-19, as well as Jesse Jackson. There's a lot of other issues that, that are going on throughout media all over the world. But I'm just trying to address my own personal issues as well as dealing. If I can help myself, then I can help you as well. Okay? All right. So this is Queen Battle of Battle First Aid Responder Services. I love you guys.